Okay, look, I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry for missing a month, but I just really had to take a break. Like, I'm talking a Corey Kenshin break. My mind was not in the right place at all. Again, thanks for waiting for me. Okay, so now into the film. So angst was the reason that made me not want to upload. So let's talk about the movie, Angst. This is a very cool movie with interesting cinematography directed by Gerald Cargill. This movie surely inspired other films like Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, and The House That Jack Built. It's similar to those two because it puts us with this unnamed serial killer who just got out of jail, but his anxious desire to kill overwhelms him. Now, this is a quick little video for a movie you guys should definitely check out on your own. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to Gohan. You know you are following a mentally ill person around with this camera work. This guy has a thirst for killing he can't explain. He's a name, but I'll just call him Werner, which is the serial killer he is loosely based on. He knocks on some old lady's door and shoots her twice for no reason. The idiot was arrested when he came back to the crime scene later. Now just interrogating him, the police figure he's just a sick fuck who wants to kill for kicks. No motive and no memory of even killing the lady. The psychiatrist assigned to him though thinks he's just pretending to be crazy so he doesn't go to prison. His past criminal history helps with that theory. A history like stealing in school, attacking animals with knives, and eventually attempting to murder his mother. Also one other thing he did was he was seduced by some hebophile pervert lady when he was 14. I guess she acted as like a, a submissive, letting the young boy whip her and more during sexual encounters. All that did was make him want to dominate others. Well, when he was 18, he was released from prison where he just tortured animals, prostitutes, and killed old ladies. He does another 10 years after the events we saw and he is released for the murder of the old lady. He probably would have been in a cell longer if they didn't think he was trying to rob that couple. The not so reformed serial killer still can't shake the nerve to kill. The thing is he is free but has nowhere to go. He stops at a coffee shop and immediately gets all hard for these two ladies. Now, if you could kill without interference, these two would be two disembodied corpses by now. He later catches a cab, but the driver reminds him of his first girlfriend. Remember that hebophile sub that let him whip her when he was just 14? He thinks they favor each other, so naturally it makes him want to torture the driver. He almost chokes her until she calls him out and he runs out crazed and broken from his own madness. Now he's running away for a long time until he comes across a big lonely house in the middle of everything. It's like the house calls his name, plus it's secluded too, probably has an umbrella laboratory underneath along with those annoying as fuck hunters. He's just wishing he can come across an unlucky homeowner. Well, someone is here, but looks like he's disabled and doesn't have the mental capacity to understand this is a dangerous stranger in front of him. He thinks Werner is his father. I love the cinematography, by the way. It fits nice and snug with how much Werner wants to see the fear in his victim's eyes. Speaking of victims, the mother and daughter just came back along with their cute little dachshund, unaware of the vicious little killer in their home. Well, that strong dog nose could smell the unique visitor a mile away. A shame he doesn't react fearfully around this alien. This house is about dry as hell. You probably could make a prequel just about these homeowners and why it's so dry in here. So as expected, Warner makes his presence known and subdues the daughter. Weirdly, the mother just watches all this like he's just a cockroach running around. Now we are in Werner's mind most of the time, so we can see how this family relates to the family he hated growing up. The daughter represents his sister, who got all the attention from his misandrous mother. The older mother here represents both his grandmother and mother, who hated him for being a man and an illegitimate child. Anyway, these homeowners are really nonchalant about the wacko in their home. The girl can't even break out of the damn tape and isn't even trying to scream. These people are very awkward victims. Now the disabled son is dragged upstairs and drowned slowly in a fit of anger that Werner thinks his stepfather deserved. He goes downstairs but sees something wrong with the mother. It seems she is in a catatonic state like an, an, an opossum. 
Sorry guys, not a big fan of opossums, but God bless them, I guess. The daughter begs Werner to give her some heart medication so she can live. And the only reason he obliges is because he wants her to die by his hand, seeing the fear in her eyes as she dies in front of her daughter. While he is looking for the pills, the daughter finally escapes from her bounds and hides. His attempts to save the mother fail since she is already dead from the stress, and he kicks her to the wall since he couldn't kill her. Well, he still has the girl to kill, but she's she's a little dumb. She's a little stupid, honestly. She really makes them dumbasses in Mother's Day look like Light Yagami. She runs away when he's chasing her, but things unironically end very gory and brutal for her. She ends up getting stabbed many times as the dog watches her blood fly everywhere. As she lays dying, he drinks her blood like that ugly ass Richard Chase. That's who Werner reminds me of the most, probably not as deluded. The blood made him vomit soon after, and he falls asleep on her corpse. Now this is a nightmarish picture. It's low key more disturbing than the murder itself. Along with how nasty Werner is makes everything pretty scary. Well his murder spree is over and now it's cleanup time. It's not going to matter anyway since he's so lost in his own mind. He desires to take the bodies with him and quite honestly nuts in his pants imagining being alone with those bodies. Fucking scrappy do here just hanging around with him too. This villain transports all the bodies after like 20 minutes of screen time and cleans himself up before finally taking off in the family car. Now again he's quite lost in his mind, almost like he's drunk off sadism imagining what to do with those bodies. He almost runs over some kids and they give him a meltdown as they circle around. This must be his first time behind the wheel. I'm actually surprised, he's driving like 50 and not even paying attention to the road. The first place he stops is at that coffee shop from before, with the same patrons there too. This time he's acting incredibly anxious and weird. Now there were times when I was younger where I wouldn't even eat at a cafeteria because I was so anxious to do something stupid and be looked at like how they look at him. In his mind he's deciding to kill everybody in the shop but at the nick of time some police officers stop by. They keep asking for the vehicle registration but he answers anxious and thrilled at the same time. Thrilled to show them the bodies he has in the trunk. Surprisingly they don't look too shocked. They must have seen a lot worse. And of course this is basically the end of angst which voices over how Werner is arrested and the psychiatrist declared him removed from society completely. Now the most interesting parts of this film for me is how much you really are listening to Werner's thoughts and feelings about killing combined with the camera work and you have the very thing that affected Werner, angst. Now that we're done let's talk about the most disturbed moment and most enjoyed moments and that's spooky stuff, cue to Gohan. So the crazy thing about serial killers is that they usually are the first macabre topic people are so fascinated with. Whether it be delusional and crazy killers like Werner or Richard Chase, or some that can act very normal like Jack or Ted Bundy. Anyway, Werner was interesting and he's probably a godfather for all those other introspective serial killer movies that we have covered before. I think the actual killing part was just a little weird, but overall it damn near seemed like the characters acted like that on purpose. I just see a bloodthirsty wolf and lambs in shock. The most disturbing moment is most likely the whole aftermath of Werner's killing spree that ended with the daughter, blood squirting everywhere, the violent pictures afterward. It makes me imagine all those crime scene photos I viewed when I was young, whether it was Jack the Ripper or Richard Ramirez. The most enjoyed moment would be certain frames where we were deeply immersed in Werner's mind. It was interesting to visit the mind of a serial killer, just like Jack or Henry, but more so the former. And that's it. This was directed by Gerald Cargill and I believe it's his only feature film that he ever made entirely. Regardless, it was blocked all over Europe for its content. And here we are today, looking right at it. If you enjoyed this video, you will definitely mess with The House That Jack Built and Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Both were most likely heavily inspired by this film, so check them out. Remember, click the like button, it's how we can get back at YouTube, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, Spooky out!